Now, the 10 minute drill. This is a big one. Brought to you by tireoutlet.com. Wholesale prices, premium service. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hit it. All right. You want to rock? I do. You want to rock? I want to rock right now. You want to rock right now? Yeah. All right, well, it's time for the 10 minute drill. Let's do it. It, it proves to rock. Listen, uh, got to give Doug Marone credit, man. He, he's trying everything, right? He's going soft. He's gone hard. He's, he's, met, he's spoken metaphorically. He's spoken matter-of-factly. Yesterday, he went to cut some film to show these guys just how good they could be, and he didn't go to last year. He went to like a month ago. Um, and, and now he'll take his team to London where they've had a lot of success. Shot Khan asked yesterday about that success in London. Well, I think the secret is the growth of the fan base. Mm -hmm. You know, I asked the players, it's like, why? Uh, and they said, it's really the enthusiastic crowd. All right, I love Shot Khan. I know he loves playing in London, but uh, you buy that the enthusiastic crowd is what's led Jacksonville to a three-game win streak overseas? Well, I've been over there, and, and uh, it is, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a good crowd, but it's no different than any other crowd. It's, no, it's, I think it's more the formula that Jags toyed around with for years and years as far as getting over there in terms of travel, and they kind of figured out, let's go at night, let's encourage the boys to take a little napper on the, uh, on the uh, ride and then uh, pop up at 7 a.m. when we arrive in London, London time and go to work get in, and stay on that clock, and then it kind of becomes more of just a regular road trip for them. So I think that's more what it is than, than the enthusiastic crowd. Um, listen, when you stand outside Wembley Stadium and the fans come walking into the stadium, and I don't doubt that they have grown the fan base over there. I, I, I believe that. But you see jerseys of every NFL team. And for the boys over there, it's much more of a party than it is a football game. Uh, more party it, than passion. Yeah, it's not electric in terms of uh, they don't know really understand when to cheer, when not to cheer, and things along those lines. It, so, yeah, I think he's grown the fan base. But I, I, I would say it's definitely more of the figuring out the formula of the hassle of playing over there. And I do think also as they've gone year after year now and for the sixth year, I believe this year, I also think that the repetition of having been there before, what to expect, how your body feels, how the, 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 the climate, the culture, the field itself. Yes. You have a big advantage over a team like the Eagles who are going to play overseas for the first time in their franchise history. Correct. I, I think there is an advantage. Yes, it'll be it will be interesting. Jeff, uh, uh, the world's largest outdoor cocktail party is coming up this weekend uh, here in Jacksonville, comma, Dilly, FLA. Dilly. Thank you so much. And I ask you this, uh, game day will be here, and there's there's going to be a, 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 a section of the game day crowd uh, in black and gold. Yeah. As Central Florida makes the bus ride over uh, uh, from Orlando. One of their big uh, uh, boosters is, is sponsoring a bus, uh, bus ride. And yeah, real spot, real, real big, generous booster sponsor going to charge twenty bucks a seat. Yeah, and they're that's the kind of boosters you got at UCF. Cash in the I'm gonna pocket. I'm going to need some gas money, but let's go up to Jacksonville for the but weekend. They're, but they're heading over here. What, what are your thoughts on on that? If you want to continue with your silliness of embarrassing yourself, then feel free to come up with signs that says "National Champion." That's why you've alienated everyone. I would like to remind UCF this: there's bigger boys than you that have been in this boat. I never saw a Boise fly banner. I never saw Boise after they beat teams in the regular season like Oregon. I never saw Boise tell everybody that, you know, I never saw Urban Meyer uh, claim a national title for Utah. Mm -hmm. uh, UCF is beyond annoying at this point, and this kind of story is not going to do them any good. There are, they're being beaten up by just about anybody who knows football. <clears throat> if you're, listen... If you're not a huge football fan and you're just rooting for UCF, I get it. I, UCF would be a nice, fun story, and they would be a very popular team if they didn't claim what wasn't theirs. And anybody who claims – you know what this reminds me of, Dan? You got two students in high school. One is taking just the normal course load, okay? And mm -hmm. they're a good student. And they get a 4.0. They're going to college. But they're not quite to the point where they're taking the advanced classes. Right. Right it would be like that student claiming the – valedictorian over the student who took all the advanced placement classes and early enrollment classes and has a 4.8. That's what this reminds me of. Yeah, I would. my only criticism, it's not even a criticism, two things. The thing that bothers me about, I, I feel like UCF, how do I put this? I think the national media guys don't do their homework on a lot of stuff. So sometimes they get exposed when they talk about a particular program because his fan base knows 
more so what's going on. And so they, they step into it and make some mistakes in terms of, of what they say. But I will say, and this is mostly about the scheduling and such. And so I defend UCF on that part of it. I also defend UCF on, you know, if they win their games, you know what, pound your chest and say, give, give us a chance. I'm fine with that. I, my only criticism of UCF is they'll come out and say, well, look, we, we scheduled uh, uh, Pitt in North Carolina this year. Okay, I get that. But if you really want to enter the fray, because because the, the the excuse is always we didn't know they weren't going to be good. Yes, you listen, did. listen. If you really want to enter the fray, you know Oklahoma is going to be good every year. Okay, you know I mean Penn State, and and you'll get more cred if you play the named program. So go play Oklahoma or Texas or Ohio State or go play those guys if you can and try to schedule. Go up there and do. And again, everybody always says, well, it's a different time, and it is. But do what Bobby Bowden did years ago to prove FSU's worth when they went and played anybody anywhere. Well, that's all. You know, the bottom line is this. If you play the red tees and I play the blue tees and we shoot the same score, you're not as good a golfer as me. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, schedule strength or any other measure, UCF is not playing the same schedule that Ohio State and Florida and Alabama and everyone else is playing. And if you think... If anyone thinks that UCF is going undefeated, playing a Power 5 conference schedule, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Period. Anyway. A little 10-minute little drill overtime yeah, right there. No, we're going. Uh, no, I'm just uh, I'm summing up as now I now point, ask counter, the next point, question. Point, point, counterpoint. Uh, Dan, I have, uh, I have discovered uh -huh. a very rickety Georgia team that is awaiting the Gators this weekend. Oh, what do you I, have? I, uh, Georgia's uh, weaknesses have been way underreported until now. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Of all the quarterbacks in Power 5, Dan, how yes. many Power 5 schools are there? 64? Does that yeah, sound right? Something like that. Okay. Of all of them, third down, passer rating, yeah. Jake Fromm, third worst in all of Power 5. Okay. I, that's unimaginable. Yeah. Do you have any sacks Georgia has this year? Uh, yes. They have less than – they have – Ja'Kai Polite has seven in seven games. I think they have nine. They have nine sacks. You know how many tackles for loss they have? Uh, no, I don't. Four and a half. Yes. Georgia sucks. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, Georgia. No, they don't. Georgia can't stay on oh, the field dear. on third down. Oh, boy. Georgia gives up more Here rushing yards than anyone in the conference. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Georgia can't protect the quarterback, and they can't get to the quarterback. Right. Uh, this should be a, a coin flip. This should be a pick em game. It should not be a seven-point spread for Georgia. This is not 2017. Uh -huh. They are in much worse condition than people know. Okay. What's your question? My question is, <laughs> who wins the game Saturday? <laughs> Do you buy those stats as influencing the game on Saturday? You've become a little bit of – I need to give you a little talking to. That's okay. I know you. You don't mind. You've become a little bit of a – roll. You've become a little bit of a a stat freak, and you find these stats that fit your narrative, and I'm specifically referring to one that you misled me and all the listeners on the other day, and it, it has bothered me for two days, and now I remember it, and I've been meaning to tell you, to scold you about this. That LeBron James stat that you pulled out the other day, uh, uh, which one? I was on the free Worse throw. The, NBA the free, free throw, throw percentage one. Yeah. I, upon We're getting further ready for a jogging on. I, I just going off ESPN. I know, but upon further review, it's 21 free throws. It's yeah. 10 of 21. Yeah. What's well, in the last, and that was like in the last year. I, I stand by that stat. Yeah. I don't give a damn. It's five or yeah. 500. Yeah. With the uh, game on the line, you, you uh, miss half of them. That's a, that's a little misleading. That's I mean, not misleading I, at all. I, I got the feeling that it was like over his career or something, the way it was presented, and that he's like at all, you know, this is why he's not. 48%. Yeah. 10 to 21. Have fun sucking yeah. then. Yeah. So, so I don't think, I don't know how this ties into Georgia, except to make this point. I don't <laughs> think Georgia sucks. <laughs> Stats are for assistant coaches and losers. Is that what you're saying? Going spurrier you on me? Suck. I, I guess the uh, Jake, Jake Fromm is if, if Florida stops the run, Georgia can't win the game. Yeah. I mean, Georgia has to have to run for 180 yards to, to win uh -huh. the game. Wouldn't you say it also works that way, too? If Georgia can stop the run, do you really think Frank's Did you on? watch the Missouri game? They ran for 375. What about the LSU game? They ran for 250. Yeah. Georgia hadn't stopped the run all year. That's the point. Well, I yes. know, but I Florida mean, has. if they figure out a way, do you trust Felipe Frank's arm? I, 
uh, I don't think that Florida will win a game this year on Felipe Frank's arm. They're going to run the football, and I think their Florida's offensive line is better than Georgia's defensive line, so I think they'll have some success. I, I mean, like I said, Missouri and LSU combined to run for about 300 apiece. I, I, I can't imagine the Gators don't have success running the ball, at least enough success. Is the overwhelming uh, narrative in the NBA at this point, how did LeBron do, or are there other – storylines that will lead the way uh, when we talk about the National Basketball Association. For example, Blake Griffin having 52 nights ago, Steph Curry going for 51. Or do we always first say, how did LeBron and the Lakers do? Uh, no, I, I think it's the, the other. You think it's the other? I don't think people went to bed last night knowing LeBron was even playing. Really? And I think the next morning, the bigger story in the NBA is Steph Curry going for 51 okay. and hitting a bunch of outrageous shots. Than well, the certainly, Lakers, certainly, than the Lakers Warriors, at Phoenix. certainly the Warriors are big enough boys. I think, I, and I think there are storylines in the East that are going to emerge. Mm-hmm. You know, that, like that's, the Raptors' uh, undefeated season. Well, and the Celtics are really good, Dan. Uh-huh. I mean, the Celtics went all the way to game seven with LeBron without Hayward and Kyrie. I mean, that, so they are going to emerge. The Bucks. With look, one of the best coaches in the league. He's gonna get he you know, the Bucks could be like the Hawks. They could win sixty games and be the top seed. They'll be other but to your point, I think it'll become more about LeBron as we get past Christmas into the second half of the year. Mm-hmm. There's gonna be a constant tracker on whether LeBron's gonna get him into the playoffs. Yes. There'll be comparison. By the way, Cleveland can't win a game. So just another example of <laughs> right of LeBron's impact. <laughs> Poor Cleveland. Just just a just a, another Poor. example. I don't I, know what Cleveland was thinking though when they Fun yeah, when they, hey! decided, when they decided they were going to stay, quote, competitive we, and not tear it down like they did last time yeah. LeBron left, they yeah. tore it down and they were terrible. <laughs> so this time their plan was to stay competitive. They're, they're in the mix, Dan. Because they Dude, signed K-Love to this max term deal. They're in get, the mix. They're getting killed by bad teams. I mean, they just lost back-to-back home games against Atlanta and Brooklyn. I know. You know, if you're not going to be able to manage that, then I, yeah, I hear you. I, I'm, I'm shocked that they're as yeah. bad as they are, yeah. uh, to be honest with you. I just have, I have one more here. All right, one more. Uh, Dan, you know, um, the big college basketball news is about this corruption uh, trial, and they are found guilty. At the end of the day, these shoes co- shoe companies are paying players at big-time programs. There's that, no doubt. Yeah, that now has been, you know, made – uh, definite, but here is a story that I'm in favor of. Okay. Um, an NBA agent and a founder of, of an agency. Uh, anyway, the nation's number 13 recruit. Okay. Darius Basley has uh, committed to Syracuse. He's now decommitted. He's going to accept a $1 million three-month internship with New Balance. Okay. God bless him. More power to him. Do you see a problem with this in any way at all? By the way, that's uh, LeBron's guy, Rich Yeah, Bay- right. Bayheim, by the way, is crying like a little baby. Uh-huh. You know, college football, college basketball, like they've been running some crystal clean. Is he going so- to do that and then go pro? Sure. Okay. Yeah. What what we're going to do now is instead of going and wasting a college's time and a classroom time, uh, if this guy's good enough. But what 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 is the comp? What is the um, they're complaining? Well, no, 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 no. What is the shoe company get out of this? Well, I'm sure he'll wear New Balance shoes when he goes to the league. He'll be one of their guys. Okay. Yeah. Just what does the shoe company get out of? I thought the shoe companies weren't giving the guys deals many deals anymore unless they're super superstars. Oh no, that's not true. It's not true. No, okay. well, plenty of plenty of almost every. I mean, every, this is what what's every a guy bucks, in the league right? get right. A million bucks for a shoe company is nothing. Oh, okay. In other words, not a lucrative deal. But if, for, if you're but an for eighteen him, year yeah. old for three months, one million, hell yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. I hope the shoe companies come and they and they and they soak up every one of these kids who have no desire at all to be a collegian. Yeah, because there's a lot of them. Yeah, who so have who have no. In other options. words, so instead of him going to Duke or Kentucky from and now until done. next June, right. He's just going to go ahead and do an in, quote internship. Right. He'll go to the New Balance headquarters, Dan. And, yeah. You know, design his uh, shoe. Work in the mailroom. Design his shoe. Yeah. You know. Right. And but but you know, get a, a million bucks a, and agent, uh, an NBA agent and founder of Clutch Sports says we have a quote broken system after that happened. You know, Bayheim is crying a river. You <laughs> well, know, he just lost a player. Yeah, well, good. He shouldn't <laughs> obviously shouldn't be. A, did he ever have any intent? Would your, would your would your opinion be different if it was Mike White's guy? You bet it would. Okay. All right. This is the <laughs> Mike White. I I I when I see Mike White, the first thing I'm going to uh, 
uh, mention him uh -huh. is how did your brother Danny oh, become no. such a participation trophy guy while you're such a hustler and winner? Caller does number. Your, does your dad despise him? Caller number three right now gets what beef? Six four one ten ten. Caller number three is going to get a pair of tickets to the Texler Gator Bowl. Heck yeah! December thirty first on a TIAA Bank Field. All right, let's talk to Doc Murphy when we come back. How about that? Next, on the drill.